Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shamika and this is Check The Rhymes. I am super excited that you're here as always. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's show is a little bit heavier and different than my usual lighter fare because this summer marked the 100 year anniversary of one of the most shameful moments in American history, the Tulsa Race Massacre. Y'all, if you don't know what that is, make sure you check out today's show because joining me is award-winning author, Brandi Colbert, and she just released a powerful new book about the Tulsa Race Massacre. It's called Black Birds in the Sky. So stay tuned because you definitely don't wanna miss today's show. Hi, Brandi, welcome to Check the Rhymes. Hi, thank you so much for having me. How are you today? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing well. First of all, I have to say, I really love the cover of Black Birds in the Sky. Um, it just like that just got my attention quickly and I, I have to know like how you came up with that cover Yes, well, I wish I could take credit for this, uh, but I cannot <laughs> it was um, Designed by Karina Luff at HarperCollins and then the artist is a woman named Natasha Cunningham And so they came up with this beautiful beautiful cover that I honestly can't stop staring at myself so I, I'm not sure that a lot of people know about like the significance or even what the Tulsa Race Massacre is. So can you give a brief overview of what it is and what kind of what led up to it? Sure. Um, so the Tulsa Race Massacre happened, um, you know, we just celebrate or not celebrated. We just um, acknowledged the 100th anniversary of it uh, this past Memorial Day. And it occurred in 1921 after a young black man named Dick Rowland um, was accused of assaulting a young white woman named Sarah Page in Tulsa. And he was arrested the next day. He was taken to the Tulsa County Courthouse and placed in a jail cell at the top there because they often had cells built specifically in places where uh, white mobs could not get to them because there was such a problem with lynchings at the time. And mm -hmm. so he was taken there and a white mob did assemble outside um, threatening to lynch him when black men with, um, they came over armed um, to try to protect Dick Rowland. And there was, um, you know, kind of a scuffle ensued, a shot rang out. They're not sure from, you know, who shot the first shot there with a gun. Uh, but after that, um, the white mob essentially just marched across the train tracks in Tulsa and destroyed um, the entire Greenwood district. Wow. What made you want to write this book? You know, I've become increasingly interested in history over the years. I really did not mm -hmm. like it as a kid. And I think it was because of the way it was taught. You know, it was really no context. It was all about names and dates and just memorization and not actually understanding what happened behind all of the events we were learning about. And so I found the Tulsa Race Massacre itself to be really fascinating, you know, not only in what happened, but the fact that it was, there was such a collective and concerted effort to hide it over the years. And right. I couldn't find any other books for younger readers, you know, specifically about it. And so I thought it would be really interesting and rewarding to write my own book about it. What do you hope that, I mean, obviously you want the younger kids to learn the history, but what else do you hope they take away from the book or even their teachers take away from the book? Sure. Yeah. I just really want people to start thinking about the way history is told and to think about, you know, um, who is telling it and you know, the sort of perspectives we've been given all these you know, decades and even centuries um, and whose stories sort of come to the forefront when you think of American history. And so I want, you know, that to kind of be flipped on its head and for people to start thinking of black history as American history and as mm -hmm. also something they need to learn themselves, whether or not they're they are black Americans. Gotcha. So the title, um, because when I first saw the title, I was like, I didn't realize it until I, you know, opened the book and started kind of really look, getting into it. What uh, Blackbirds in the Sky? I like, I love the title, but how did you come up with that? Yeah, thank you. So that came from um, a quote from a survivor named Genevieve Elizabeth Tillman Jackson, and she said, "I saw what I thought were little blackbirds dropping out of the sky over the Greenwood District, but those were no mm -hmm. little birds. What was falling from the sky was." bullets and devices to set fires and debris of all kinds. So, you know, she was a little girl at the time and she saw the bombs dropping from these planes, you know, on her neighborhood. And she, you know, almost poetic. I, you know, when I read that quote, I thought, wow, what a beautiful way to describe something really horrific happening to you. 
yeah, I just got chills when you were describing it. I'm like, wow, like to um, be at such a young age and to kind of say that, you know, word it like that. Um, that's powerful. So can you discuss the role of the media in that massacre and kind of maybe if they fueled racial tensions or how that kind of played out? Certainly. Yeah, the media was, you know, um, had a habit of being quite sensational at the time, you know, in the 1920s, early 1900s. There were two competing newspapers there in Tulsa that were considered the white newspapers because, you know, black Tulsans had their own black newspaper that reported about them. And, um, you know, after the Roland was arrested, there was a really inflammatory front page headline that was printed called, you know, it said, to nab Negro tonight. And essentially, you know, calling for his lynching. And so, you know, whether or not the lynch, the white mob would have showed up outside the courthouse without that headline, we don't know. But um, the Tulsa Tribune certainly, you know, I think incited some of the violence and, you know, encouraged the white mob to go and threaten to lynch him. Do you think that, like, the role of the media today kind of also helps to fuel some of the racial injustices or... It, it sounds very similar. The headlines, you know, just depending on which outlet, I guess, you're you're reading or looking at. Um, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Especially with, like, say, for example, like with George Floyd. Do you, how do you think the media plays a role? Right. You know, yeah, I guess it depends on which outlet you're looking at. I, I do think there's certainly some sensational reporting, you know, still happening today that um, could be... Um, could have a little more integrity, I guess I should say. Um, but certainly I think people need to be aware of the news sources they're consuming and to see, you know, that with these articles are being sourced and to make sure that there is integrity behind the writing of them because, you know, if you do pick up the wrong, the wrong newspaper, or wrong magazine, or, you know, look at the wrong website, um, certainly I think that you can get some misinformation there or just a more sensational type of reporting. Absolutely. Now, are you going on a book tour or how can people like get a signed copy of your book? Sure. So everything is still virtual for me. I don't get to go out and meet readers um, right now, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. Um, but the book is available at bookstores um, everywhere. If you go to HarperCollins.com and type in uh, the book title, Blackbirds in the Sky, you will find a list um, of where you can get a signed copy at uh, many, many independent bookstores around the country, and I would always encourage people to shop at independent bookstores when they can. Absolutely. Thank you, Brandy, so much for joining me here on Check the Rhymes. Everybody go get Blackbirds in the Sky. It's an amazing read, and it will, if you don't know about the Tulsa <laughs> uh, race massacre, you will learn an, a lot. Uh, I thank you for writing this book. Oh, thank you so much for having me on to talk about it. 